Hello, I'm John McDermott from IoT Auckland. This week we were joined by Sarah Spangelo, the CEO and co-founder of Swarm Space, to hear an update on the progress of their satellite IoT system. There's some really interesting information that Sarah shared with us and I hope you enjoy the video. Um, but otherwise had the pleasure of connecting with John and I'm sure a few others of you may be on the call. We're a huge fan of New Zealand. You guys have an endless amount of really interesting and meaningful use cases that you know have to do with IoT and some emerging spaces. So really excited to be part of this call here and excited to introduce our CEO, Sarah, to share a little bit more about Swarm. Great, thanks Dallas, really appreciate that. Um, so very excited to be here. Um, I've had the privilege of visiting New Zealand twice now and uh, both were extremely memorable trips and met many of you um, in person and, and on uh, virtual calls. Um, and I have to say, you're probably our favorite country. Um, so we love working with you guys. I'll, I'll talk about some of the ways that we've, we've had synergies. Um, and um, yeah, just really excited to give you a little bit more information about Swarm. Um, so maybe I'll start with a little bit of background. Um, I actually grew up in Canada. I did my undergrad degree in mechanical engineering there. Um, and then my master's and PhD at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and um, had the privilege of working on small satellites while I was there. Got a little bit spoiled, uh, got to launch two 3U sized CubeSats, so 12 times bigger than the Swarm satellites. Um, and that really kind of captivated me in terms of um, participating in real space programs. After that, I went to JPL, which is a NASA center in Southern California. And uh, that was, again, an amazing experience. Got to work on small missions and large missions. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get to fly anything in two and a half years that I was there. So decided to move on to Google X um, here in the Bay Area, where I got to work on Project Wing, which is the drone uh, delivery system, and then also a secret of satellite project while, while I was at Google. Um, and then after about a year of being there, Ben and I actually started Swarm. And we were really motivated. This was kind of late 2016. We were really motivated seeing a lot of connectivity solutions emerging, um, but many of them requiring extremely high um, capital investments um, or being extremely complicated aerospace programs. So programs like OneWeb and Starlink um, and Project Loon and Facebook had a solar powered UAV project. Um, and it turns out we were right, two of, two of the four of those have failed or gone bankrupt. Um, and we saw a really interesting opportunity to do something with really small satellites. And that's really where we started. Um, and we initially proposed um, a super small kind of credit card sized satellite um, and pitched that to investors that were also um, very excited and interested in connecting the world with low cost solutions. Um, and that, that's really, you know, was the motivation for Swarm, and, and that's really what we're bringing to market this year. So it's very cool to see um, this becoming a reality four years later. Um, so I'll dive in and, and give you a little bit more background, um, more about Swarm, and then excited to um, hear questions from you guys as well at the end. So as many of you know and are actively engaged in, in the community here, um, there's an existing and ongoing explosion of IoT um, on a global scale. So there's anticipated to be 75 billion IoT devices online by 2025 with ma massive growth rates. Um, part of the challenge is that these devices can do a lot of great things, monitoring soil and air and water and logistic systems. However, they can only really uh, be activated and provide ROI uh, to the world um, if they're connected to the internet. And that's a major challenge for a lot of these IoT solutions, particularly because global connectivity options are limited. You have cell and terrestrial based systems, but those often don't extend globally. And then you have satellite, which has historically been extraordinarily expensive. So we're kind of caught in this, this interim uh, where we want connectivity that's low cost um, and everywhere. And that's really the problem that we're trying to solve with Swarm. Um, IoT is particularly interesting in New Zealand, of course. You have many industries um, that are very synergistic with IoT across agriculture, apiculture, ranching, forestry, mining. Um, and you also have a large country 
um, that doesn't have great cell connectivity everywhere. Of course, you've got cell in cities, but there's huge gaps in the, in the large land area between those cities. So it's actually very well suited and, and has some problems that Swarm can really help address. As many of you are aware, um, cell-based and terrestrial-based solutions currently only cover 10% of the Earth's surface area or 35% of the land area. So the rest of the region really doesn't have uh, low-cost connectivity solutions, um, except for expensive SATCOM, of course. And that's, that's really what we're trying to solve for as well. Satellite can be great. Um, it can provide global continuous coverage. It can be wonderful for rural and remote use cases. It can provide reliable service. Um, you know, cell phone towers get knocked out due to storms or fires and, and satellite can be the backup. However, it comes with some really high costs. And those are particularly around extremely high capex. So you have to buy these big thousands, multiple thousand dollar dishes can be a very uh, costly service. Um, and then it can also be really difficult to buy and set up. And I'm sure many of you have experienced this in yourselves. I know our team has, um, because they're often sold through resellers in a really non-intuitive type of way. Um, so this is why satellite historically has been very challenging. Um, and, and Swarm is really addressing this in a, in a totally new way. So the main breakthrough here has been over the past several years, past 20 or 30 years, satellites have been getting smaller. So the big Iridium satellites that were launched in the 80s and 90s were almost 1,000 kilograms. Um, with the advent of microsatellites and CubeSats, uh, Terabella, uh, which was an imaging platform, um, but that was you know, shrinking down to about 100 kilograms. And then in the kind of 2010 era, the concept of three U CubeSat, so even smaller, about 10 kilograms, were starting to be launched. And those were the size that I actually got to work on when I was doing my PhD at Michigan. Um, and Ben and I noticed in that kind of 2016 timeframe that satellites weren't really getting smaller. And we recognized that if you were going to make a massive breakthrough in the cost uh, point, um, you would have to shrink the satellites. And that's because the main cost with these satellites is actually launching them which scales directly with the mass and volume of the satellites. So we were able to invent this tiny satellite, and I actually have one here. They're literally so small that I can hold it in my hand. Um, and these are the types of satellites that we have up in space. We have 21 right now. We'll talk about that later. Um, and the way that we did that is we developed a new way to stabilize the satellites. So historically, they've required a lot of heavy equipment. We were able to take all of that away and have a clever way to stabilize the satellites. And then of course the antennas unfurl. So that's the major breakthrough that actually allowed us to start Swarm as a very small satellite platform. And what's so cool about this is that um, a company for the first time ever in history is able to launch an entire constellation. Our constellation is 150 satellites for less than what we raised in our series A. We raised a 25 million series A about two years ago. And that inflection point or that sweet spot has never happened in history. And with this type of innovation and invention, we're able to do that for the first time. And you might wonder, well, what does this mean for IoT or for me? And what that means is that we're able to share a lot of these cost savings, most of these cost savings with the user. So we're able to offer data services at 120th, 1/100th the cost of existing solutions today, which is obviously really exciting. So our mission, um, given the technology and the problem we're trying to solve, is to connect devices on every, at every point on Earth at all times at the lowest possible cost. Pretty simple, um, and we're really bringing this to reality this year um, with, our, with our latest launch and go-to-market. The types of applications that we um, service are a bunch that we talked about in New Zealand. Agriculture is obviously a huge one. Logistics is another big one. Environmental monitoring. Um, energy is also an emerging one. So this is oil and gas, soil, or sorry, uh, wind, solar, and several others. Maritime is also an, an interesting one. Of course, there's no uh, terrestrial-based solutions in the oceans. So we can provide a lot of value to buoys and, um, and fishing boats and container ships that travel oceans. 
And then we also do quite a bit of work in uh, global development. So trying to monitor simple things like water supply, air quality, um, and provide infrastructure to communities that can't afford and, and don't have the cellular um, infrastructure that we have um, here in the US and in New Zealand. So where is Swarm at today? We are actually commercially operational. So I'm, I'm very excited and proud of our team that we've gotten to this really pivotal point. We've launched 12 commercial satellites in September, so just a, about a month ago. And all 12 worked beautifully, um, actually at the upper end of what we expected. We've been doing a variety of internal tests and checkout, um, and then we're running pilots with a variety of early customers on the network. Um, we also have a pool in 10 countries. Um, we had New Zealand first, super easy to work with. We also have Australia, Canada, several in Europe. And UK. Um, international waters, we have approval over, and we're working to expand to several other countries um, in South America, Africa, Europe, and, and really across the world. We're also fully funded, so we've fully signed up for all of the launches needed to carry our 150 satellites to space with redundancy, of course. Um, and we have contracts in place, so we're a go. Um, and you know, we're really excited to continue to deploy to deploy our constellation through the rest of the year. Um, but you know, you can you can essentially buy Swarm services today, which is obviously very exciting. Um, and we'll be continuing to scale out more and more devices over the next several months and, and years. Our current status, we have 21 satellites in orbit. 12 of those are the most recently launched um, commercial satellites. You can see them all bunched up right over New Zealand, providing a lot of connectivity. Um, those will eventually spread out within their orbital plane to provide global coverage. Um, and we're going to be launching several more times this year and then several more times next year as well. We currently have tw uh, sorry, 18 ground stations around the world. Um, our satellites actually do provide global coverage. The Earth kind of spins underneath these orbits uh, that are fixed relative to the sun. Um, so if you're sitting in New Zealand or in California, you'll get four or five passes a day where you can transmit data. And as the satellites spread out and then we launch more orbits, th that will become um, even, even um, more frequent. And the satellites are quarter use that I just showed off. So the, the smallest communication satellites in space. And then what we're striving for by mid to late 2021 will be 150 satellites. And you can see in this image, they actually cover the entire globe. We've optimized for coverage. So regardless of where you are in the world, you can always send a message on the SWARM network. We'll also be deploying 40 or more ground stations around the world, um, and then we'll have global continuous coverage, so always multiple satellites overhead. You might be wondering at this point, how does this compare to some of the terrestrial networks and even some of the existing incumbents that I've heard about or the emerging startups like Starlink and Hiber? So SWARM is unique in that we are truly global. So if you look along the X axis, unlike the terrestrial networks that are just around cities or maybe just slightly outside of cities, we're truly global. So everywhere, all the time. And then we're also the lowest cost option. So we're gonna be cheaper than the other small satellite startups. We're gonna be much cheaper than the highly capitalized constellations. Um, and then we'll be considerably cheaper relative to Iridium. So this is kind of the white space that we're playing in and how we're uniquely positioned relative to some of the um, competitors. Our architecture is pretty simple. Um, we have the Swarm tile that many of you probably saw when we announced our products and pricing a few weeks ago. This is a simple um, embedded modem that goes within um, um, any sort of device that you might have. It could be a moisture sensor, it could be a logistics asset tracker, or any other sort of widget. Um, and data flows from the widget to the tile, and then there's a simple eight inch antenna that transmits data up to our satellites. The satellites are store and forward, so they'll store that message until they pass over a ground station. And in New Zealand, because our footprint is so large, if a message is up uplinked um, from any location in New Zealand, it can immediately be downlinked. 
So there's no, no real delays or latencies most of the time. So the message comes down to the ground stations and then that is connected to our backend that we call the Swarm Hive. And then customers can access their data through APIs. Um, and we've had many customers successfully complete this loop. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy and we're, we're working to make it even easier with documentation and support and everything. Um, and then we also have another product called the Tracker that you might have heard about. Um, this is, has a, a tile inside of it um, and is kind of a standalone device. Um, and we're actually going to, at the end of this session, allow people to send us messages that we'll send through trackers that connect to our cell phones through the network uh, to colleagues or yourself or loved ones. Um, so this is a kind of a unique messaging um, type of capability that we're also developing. And I mentioned this before, but we are trying to keep this as easy as possible, designing it for developers. So we have um, a developer's um, page. Um, I think it's swarm.space slash developers tools. Is that right? Can someone from my team chime in? Probably yeah, that's it. Awesome. We can maybe put that in the chat so people can check it out. And we offer a bunch of documentation, product manuals, scripts that you might use to get going uh, from the beginning. We provide devices for early testing through the early access program. I'll talk more about that in a few slides. And then we have wonderful technical support. Um, so we have a technical support team. Our CTO gets involved. We really like to help customers be very successful in the first few days and weeks after they get their devices um, to make sure they're able to transmit through the network. And then we have the early access program. So um, this is an awesome opportunity for people to sign up. You can sign up um, at the end of this session with us and we'd love to have a chat with you um, to test in a really early capacity on our network. And we're um, shipping devices and we'll um, most likely get to shipping anyone that signs up now in Q1. We have quite a bit of backlog of people interested. Um, and you can start testing on the network um, in New Zealand or Australia um, as soon as you receive uh, your devices. So feel free to reach out. We'll provide some emails at the end and contact. We'd love to chat with you about joining that early access program. And then I just wanted to comment that we have a lot of synergies with New Zealand. It's, it's pretty fun to recognize that from the beginning, we've been working with your regulators. So MBIE has been a huge support, support and awesome to work with um, through our various approvals and, um, and going to market. We also have launched with Rocket Lab in the past and actually our next 24 satellites will be launched out of New Zealand in November. So we love working with them. Um, I got to meet Pete, the CEO, a few years ago, and we talked about our, our visions for Swarm and Rocket Lab, and, and that was really fun, and we hope to continue launching with them. We also have one ground station currently deployed in, ground, in, in New Zealand and planning another one in Great North. And then our first transmission from a commercial customer was actually from a New Zealand-based co company as well. So lots of synergies. We love working with you guys, um, and we're really excited to continue bringing additional connectivity solutions at super low cost um, to your use cases around uh, all, all around New Zealand.